Good morning, everyone. It's Sally. And today we're beginning a new mini series on hymns we love leading up to Easter. Uh, and to begin with, we're going to focus on the hymn, which is both based probably on the most famous psalm in the Bible. For 3000 years, in times of struggle and challenge, people have turned to Psalm 23 for comfort, guidance and support. The hymn is actually just a 17th century translation of the original Hebrew scriptures. The psalm itself was written by King David about a thousand years before Jesus was born. David was the greatest king Israel ever had. He was powerful, victorious in battle and loved by his people. He was the great grandfather times 25 of Joseph, the father of Jesus. And as well as being king, he was a significant spiritual leader. But David wasn't always a sophisticated psalm writing king. He started life as a shepherd boy, looking after his father's sheep. And this psalm draws on all his experience as a shepherd, following the journey through a year in the life of a shepherd and his sheep. It starts at home, where the sheep can relax in green pastures feeding beside still waters where every need is carefully supplied and the sheep are safe and well fed. But as the summer heat comes, the grass withers and streams dry out. So the shepherd needs to lead his sheep up into the mountains, to the high pastures where the grass is better. And the journey there through the dark valleys up the mountainsides can be hazardous with wolves, bears and lions to fend off. But when the sheep get to the high plateaus or tablelands as they're called, they will find that the shepherd has already prepared the grass for them and it will sustain them through the hot summer while the shepherd will protect them from predators with his rod and staff. And then once summer turns to autumn, the shepherd will lead his sheep back home for the winter months and back to safety. And in the same way, God, our good shepherd, looks after us. Let's notice three things. Firstly, the good shepherd daily cares for and protects his sheep. Secondly, the good shepherd travels every step of the journey with his sheep. And finally, the good shepherd leads his sheep back to his home where they're safe and looked after forever. The book of Isaiah said that says that God tends his flock like a shepherd. He gathers the lambs in his arms and carries them close to his heart. This is exactly the picture of daily love and care that David sees as he writes this psalm. God is his shepherd and he is our shepherd. In John's gospel, Jesus describes himself as the good shepherd. God created and redeemed you and me. He loves us as his own, just like the shepherd owns and cares for his sheep. But just as God is like the shepherd, so we are like sheep and often in need of some shepherding. Of all domesticated animals, sheep are the least able to look after themselves. They have no defence against predators. They can't find their own food. They're susceptible to endless bugs and infections. They can't even shed their own wool without the help of the shepherd. As we saw this week from the story of Barak, the sheep in Australia, he had grown 35 kilograms of wool before he was found and shorn. Sheep are also known for making some very poor decisions that leave them in trouble. It's not uncommon, for example, for a slightly overweight sheep to find a nice comfy hollow to lie in. But as it snuggles down, its centre of gravity can move and suddenly none of its feet are touching the ground. It's then stuck and if left alone like this, it will die. I think this is a wonderful picture of how God, our shepherd, cares for us. Like sheep, we will often look for the comfy hollow to settle in, choosing the easy life rather than following the shepherd. We can get distracted and lost down the cul-de-sacs of life. But God is the wonderful shepherd who daily comes and picks us up, puts us gently on our feet and returns us to his flock. As the psalm says, he restores our soul. Secondly, as we know life is a journey, and there'll be times when things are not easy find ourselves in a dark place where we can't see where we're going and where we're afraid. And here the psalm promises us that God is by our side journeying with us. To get to the better pastures, the shepherd can't take the sheep along the ridges because the ground is too steep. Instead, he must take them up the narrow, deep and dark valleys. 
But in these valleys, the sheep can't see where they're going. It's dark and there are predators. So they have no choice but to trust to the wisdom and protection of their shepherd. In the same way, David promises that God will be there to lead us through the dark times when we can't see where we're going or what may be coming up behind us. David does not say that he walks in the valley of the shadow of death, but through it. The sheep go through the valleys either on their way to the fresh grass of the high plateau or on their way back home. Like them, we will never stay permanently in the valleys. God will lead us out either to a better place here or to our ultimate home. But either way, he promises always to walk with us. The other thing you may notice when you look at the psalm and the hymn is that it starts in the third person. The Lord is my shepherd. He makes me lie down. He leads me. He guides me. But as soon as we pass through the valleys, psalm turns to the first person. You are with me. Your rod comforts me. You anoint my head. God never promises to insulate us from the hard times in life, but he does promise to be with us through them. And if we stick with him through these times, then our relationship with him will deepen and strengthen. And finally, David promises that God will lead us home. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Ultimately, our journey through life will end. Whatever green pastures or dark valleys we're traveling through will finish. And there God promises to be with us and to take us safely home. In saving us on the cross, Jesus didn't save us for a better life here and now, but for an eternity with God. Picturing what that might be like is not easy. What do we actually know about eternity? Well, we know it will be physical and not so dissimilar to what is around us now. The Bible talks about a new earth, one like this, but perfect. It will therefore be much the same as living on earth, but also totally different, with no pain, no death, no tears. C.S. Lewis expresses it brilliantly. At the end of the last battle, the finale of his Narnia books, that world is drawn to an end as they look forward to what happens next. And he says this. And for us, this is the end of all the stories. And we can most truly say that they all lived happily ever after. But for them, it was only the beginning of the real story. All their life in this world and all their adventures in Narnia had only been the cover and the title page. Now, at last, they were beginning chapter one of the great story, which no one on earth has read, which goes on forever, in which every chapter is better than the one before. As we head towards life with God forever, we can know and trust that our good shepherd will be there with us and will lead us safely to his home. So put your life in his hands again and trust his love. He has promised to protect us every step of the way. No matter how easy or how dark the valley, he will be with us forever and our hope will never fail. Thank you to Steve Kramer who wrote that for Connections. And I'm gonna pray now, and then we're gonna listen to this wonderful hymn. Let's pray together. And in the book of Romans chapter eight, Paul says, I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Heavenly Father, thank you that you are my good shepherd, that you're by my side through the best times, but also through the darkest of valleys when life feels too hard. You you promise never to leave me. And now in the midst of this ongoing pandemic, please draw close. Lead me, protect me, care for me, sustain me. I trust that you will lead me through these dark and uncertain times and will be by my side whatever happens for now and forevermore. In Jesus' name. Amen. Have a great day and I'll see you again next week.